Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another Minecraft discussion. Uh, yeah, all things well-being. Remember, it's about what gets in here, becoming the becoming the boss of our brain. That is what Minecraft is about. I'm realizing that these points that is really need to go. It's February. You've got to like move into like lean into Valentine's Day and out of, you know, poinsettias, which ironically grow in Florida, I think. Anyway, my name is Kimberly Quinn, and I am here on this super snowy day. I'm going to be walking around my house because as much as I love snow for skiing, it's not great for filming. So I'm going to be walking around because I love to walk. I think the best when I'm in motion. Okay, so today we're going to talk about our own superpower of synchronicity, and I'm going to do a big shout out right off the bat for my friend Tom, and also uh, colleague Tom, and he's just, oh my God, this guy's amazing. I interviewed him yesterday, actually, for the Minecraft podcast. So I'm not going to give away too many of his uh, ideas here for sure. I'm going to put the link down below here for you. Uh, but the reason he, he's inspired me, well, for lots of reasons, but also we've been talking about this in a sense, you know, we're talking about, oh, 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 because uh, my good friend Oprah, she just isn't aware, I haven't met her yet, dying to someday for sure, definitely. Uh, she talks about listening to the whispers. We've been talking a lot about, uh, in, this, in this Minecraft, like, little, maybe it's not a series, Minecraft discussion on how living our best life and finding our sense of purpose and all this good stuff, we cannot do that. We cannot do that without acknowledging and embracing, leaning into, that's what the young adults say. I'm, like, fluent in young adults because I'm surrounded by them every day. They'll, they'll just say, like, lean into a good habit. Cool. So we're going to lean into um, our, our superpower of, of listening to these whispers, listening to that inner voice, because we cannot, emphasis on, on cannot, you know, sort of manifest, first of all, forget, well, manifest, manifest is, we got to be aware first, right? Aware, acknowledge, embrace, manifest our purpose, because we're all put on this earth to do something. You know, we're all to do something great, no matter what great means for you, right? We cannot do that if we don't get the divine connection. You call it universe, source, higher power, whatever. So my friend Tom is talking about something so cool, and his stories, I just, I hope you'll listen to it, because his stories alone are the coolest things. So as far as synchronicity, right, that, that's when the internal psyche meets up with the external world and these happenings. So if you've ever had the experience of, um, thinking about somebody, you just had them on the mind, you haven't seen them in a while, then all of a sudden you just sort of bump into them. You're like, wow, that was a coincidence. I personally don't believe in those, but anyway, that was a coincidence. Or you've been thinking about the same person, the phone rings and it's them, and there's a coincidence. That's weird. Or if you've ever had a situation where you just were in the right place at the right time, you know, for a friend, for yourself, for whatever... And Tom, my friend Tom, has way bigger stories than those. That you just there's no no explanation. And so he talks about. I'm not going to give those away because I'm going to put the link down below. But he talks about there are there are three specific components that really make up most of the experiences of synchronicity. And he actually did research on this stuff. And he told me the person, the people that he interviewed and stuff, they just, they couldn't even shut it off because they're like, oh my God, you can't believe this happened. Blah, 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 blah. So there's three components and they talks about the head, the heart, and the hands. So I'm not going to give you that juice either. I want you to listen to it because it's that, that freaking good. Oh my God. So there, so this is a thing and people say, oh, these tend to come in threes. I always thought that was a myth, but according to my friend Tom, it isn't. And he's the one who did the research on it. So it's, it's just absolutely wild. And, but here's the thing, because so we've been talking about this in a way, you know, with listening to the whispers, lis listening to the inner voice, and that can be in a sense of just guiding you to the right job, right partner, right whatever. And it can also be avoiding something, like the whispers, ignoring things that are maybe leading to something bad health-wise, like a heart attack. We're not listening to this we these whispers saying, slow down, or these whispers saying, you know, to prioritize maybe a family member and, and then who's older, and then they're, they're gone or whatever soon, okay? Hopefully it's not those reasons. Those are also whispers, though. Those are definitely whispers to guide us into a better place, to redirect us. So I'm thinking in a more positive sense, I guess that's positive, too, in a sense of not taking people for granted and taking care of our health, so that's still positive. But what I mean is kind of like you know. You know when you're in love. Like if you have to ask if you're in love, I've actually, you know, I've actually had this chat with my kids. 
if you if you have to ask in your love, you're not in love because you don't. It's you just know. Like you just. It's like a sea belief. You just know. When when we walked into this house, actually, my husband laughs because I blew it for the in front of the real estate person. I didn't even go downstairs. I'm upstairs right now. I didn't even go downstairs because I was sold on upstairs. I said, oh my God, I got this is definitely the house for us. Oh my God, I got, he's like, oh, way to, way to hold a poker face, Kimbo. You know what I mean? Because I knew, I just knew this was the house for us. And it can happen with a car. It's not like material stuff. You can, again, you can know if you're in love, you can know if a relationship is right. You can, you know when a, when a, when a job is right because especially if it's your calling, if you, you just know, like I'm just meant to be here, which is what I feel like at Champlain. Literally, I don't use the word every very often, it's polarized, but literally every day, even if it's a bad day, I feel like, okay, which I have very, very few, I've been kind of like on one hand in 12 years. <clears throat> and even the whole day wasn't bad, you might have just had a prickly pear like I had recently. And it's still, I still feel very meant to be, like even that little curveball didn't, didn't rattle me to my core. I was like, okay, they got stuff going on in their life that's preventing them from being their best self and acting out and whatever. Um, but I, I just, I, 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 I was just having this chat actually with my other friend um, that I interviewed. Actually, Tom was Wednesday. Yesterday was Maz. Thursday. We both feel like that. We both feel like this. We're just meant to be there. It's just, and you just know it. So that is the thing. So the superpower my friend talks about, he says, we all have it. We all have it. And people will say, oh, I don't. How do you tune into that? Or all oh, that's just gobble, you know, mushy, gushy, touchy, feely, gobbledygook. No, it isn't. He had so many people that he researched with experiences. And here's the thing, the synchronicity stuff where we get an alignment, our personalities, who, the essence of who we are aligns with what we're meant to do. There is nothing you can't do. Like Wayne Dyer says, with God, source, universe, whatever, together with you, nothing is impossible, which means no thing is impossible. So when Tom talks about sort of at the end of the, of the, of his conversation on the podcast, he says, you know, as far as getting in tune with this, we all have it. However, if you're flying around like a gerbil on crack, you're not going to see it. It's like, it's, 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 it's everywhere. And really how we learn how to um, access this superpower that we all have right inside of us. Don't need to look any farther than right. What's inside of you is quieting the mind. And we've been talking about this a lot too, because with all that noise and it's so easy in this world with all the technology and all the busyness and especially in the States. And I love my country. We are flying around like gerbils on crack and we, we prioritize achieving, achieving, achieving. And I'm not saying be a slacker. That is not the message. However, we can get wrapped up too much in that where we, where we become human doings instead of human beings. And that is not when you're going to be aware of the synchronicity going on right around you. I mean, I've bumped into friends in Manhattan. Think of the chances of that. In fact, I bumped into a good friend uh, from Champlain on the cliffs of Moore. Thankfully, we didn't bump real estate or, you know, but we bumped it. Imagine that. We both, we knew we were in Ireland, but we were on opposite sides of the country. Never knew that we were going there that day. And think of the timing. Like she could have been in the restroom. I could have been in the restroom. It was very crowded in that cafeteria where we saw her husband. We could have parked. It could have been just five minutes off. Like if we left five minutes earlier or she left or got there five minutes later, like it was milliseconds that would have changed that whole thing. And we ended up actually bumping into a friend from Champlain at the Cliffs of Moor in, in Ireland. That's nuts. Cannot explain it. Milliseconds could have changed it. Or if we just walked down that hallway instead of this hallway or whatever. Just crazy. So Tom talked a lot about really the only effort. We've been talking a lot about doing less, not more, right? So... The effort part goes into quieting the mind, and, and the great ones are all saying this. Again, John Kabat-Zinn, Deepak Chopra says a calm mind is a powerful mind, powerful mind, and we learn to listen because when we put it out there, the universe gets out of the way. In fact, who else said that? Will Smith. Inspiration comes from everywhere. I remember he was talking about uh, plan A and plan B. I love this line. He says, get your plan A. He says, forget the plan B. Plan B takes away from plan A. He says, just just you, you got to believe it like they're all saying Wayne Dyer Oprah Will Smith all of them got to believe it and then what Will Smith said is the universe will just get out of your way kind of like when you dig that hole down by the beach you dig and then the water fills in it's just like it's gonna fill you up fill up your life everything is just going to come together because that's just how it works and the other thing Tom brought up which I totally agree with 
It talks about quieting the mind with meditation, prayer, if that's what you do. Even sleep, because we're not, we're not too good to ourselves or anybody else when our minds are tired from, from not having enough sleep. But the meditation or prayer thing. So he also talks about how these answers in life direction often is crystal clear when we are in a place that's vulnerable. And I can tell you from my own life, we have to do about probably six other <laughs> videos to tell all the stories, but wow. And when we were first married, my husband and I, we used to talk about miracle checks because <laughs> we were both working and everything, but we're down in Alexandria, Virginia, which is just outside DC, as probably many of you know. And it was just expensive. And every once in a while, we would literally, you know, we were in our early 20s, got married like right out of the gate, out of college, basically. And, you know, we'd be like short on this, even though we're both working full tilt and all that. And then there'd be like some weird check would come from everybody in the insurance pool. No one got a ticket or, and then you got like an extra hundred dollars. And that felt like a hundred, a hundred million at that time because we were newlyweds and we had our son, um, you know, just like a year and a half after getting married. And then we could pay the electric bills and miracle checks. My husband calls them that still, <laughs> miracle checks. And they just, it, like when you're vulnerable, stuff just happens or that person walks through the door. I've had a million stranger experiences when I've been lost. I should actually say I'm misplaced. I'm not really lost. I'm kind of just, I wander around a lot. And just then that person shows up right who's safe and good and kind, points you where you want to go. It's wild. So the synchronicity thing, when the internal psyche, you know, is in, in alignment with the universe or source or higher power or God or however, for me it's God, but source, higher power, whatever. Wow, the world, you have the world by the ass, let me tell you. So quiet the mind, listen, and um, watch for the green lights. That's gonna be my little uh, foreshadowing to listen to my friend Tom because his thing is I'm watching for the green lights. I will put the link below for you and that's it. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from Northern Vermont in my very beautiful kitchen with poinsettias that need to get thrown out. Okay, have a mindful, mindful day.